To get started with the background of the movie Martian released in 2015, the main protagonist, Mark Watney, was in a manned mission to Mars when his team gets separated in a violent storm. The team believes he is dead and ends up abandoning him. Thus, Mark must find a way to stay alive while waiting for rescue. In this specific scene from the movie, I will be analyzing the chemical processes that Mark uses to gain water from hydrazine, a commonly used rocket fuel. He needs water for one objective, to grow potatoes and to drink in order for his survival. Here, he explains the basic processes he will utilize. The problem is water. I have created 126 square meters of soil, but every cubic meter of soil requires 40 liters of water to be farmable. So I gotta make a lot more water. The good thing is I know the recipe. You take hydrogen, you add oxygen, you burn. Here, he explains the basic process, which the balanced overall reaction is 2H2 plus O2 makes 2H2O. At first glance, this overall reaction appears to be an exothermic synthesis reaction, but it is actually a redox reaction taking place. The hydrogen forms H+, which provides excess electrons, and the oxidation process can be seen above. The two minus charges in oxygen ions are then reduced, making the overall reaction that I just stated. Although the explanation image above shows an example of oxygen and hydrogen in a fuel cell, the reaction taking place in the movie takes the same redox reaction process. Now I have hundreds of liters of unused hydrazine at the NDV. If I run the hydrazine over an iridium catalyst, it'll separate into N2 and H2. Hydrazine, which are used as rocket fuels, are often used with catalysts in real life, such as iridium. Although not mentioned here, aluminum oxide is often used together as well in order to create the three following decomposition reactions involving ammonia, hydrogen gas, and nitrogen gas as shown on the screen. To go slightly into rocket science, the first two reactions is an exothermic process that can generate up to 800 Celsius degrees with a delta H of 102.1 kilojoules per moles. The third reaction serves to reverse the second reaction back to the first reaction. His goal here is to create hydrogen necessary for the later redox reaction of oxygen to create water. And then if I just direct the hydrogen into a small area and burn it. Luckily, in the history of humanity, nothing bad has ever happened from lighting hydrogen on fire. Unfortunately, unlike the sarcastic remark that this astronaut speaks of, lighting hydrogen with fire is an extremely dangerous process that can lead to a violent explosion. A historical example of this is the Hindenburg disaster. Many of you may have seen this picture, and the reason for this catastrophe was due to the hydrogen inside his body igniting with some kind of heat source, although that initial ignition source still remains mysterious to this day. NASA hates fire because of the whole fire makes everybody die in space thing. So everything they sent us up here with is flame retardant with the notable exception of Martinez's personal items. I am sorry Martinez, but if you didn't want me to go through your stuff, you shouldn't have left me for dead on a desolate planet. By the way, I'm figuring you're gonna be fine with this given my present situation. Here, he slowly opens the nozzle to let out small quantities of H2 liquid. He creates small sparks to create a flame to initiate the reaction. Unfortunately, he fails to account for the excess oxygen that his body exhales from the carbon dioxide, which would have created way more products than expected, which, in turn, would have created the explosion leading to Mark regretting every action he did. So yeah, I blew myself up. Best guess, I forgot to account for the excess oxygen that I've been exhaling when I did my calculations because I'm stupid. Yeah, I'm gonna get back to work here. 
just as soon as my ears stop ringing. Thank you for listening.